Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1 6 scale figure 2 pack unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at the Saturn Toys Dynamic Duo aka Burt Ward as Robin, Adam West as Batman, based off their appearances in the classic Batman TV series. Now I got mine directly from Saturn Toys, this is a review sample, so a massive thank you goes out to them for making this video possible. All opinions, they're still going to be my own, and don't forget, this is an unlicensed, unofficial 2-pack. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys or third-party review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I reckon it's pretty good. We've got the moon in the background with this blue glow coming from it, Batman and Robin front and centre, then down below dynamic duo with that classic bat symbol behind it. They've also dialed up the saturation on the suits just to help them pop a little bit more than usual. I'm not sure about the filter choice though, adding this faux texture with all these squiggly lines on the surface, I just think it was unnecessary. This image is iconic enough and it pops enough, they didn't really need the filter. On the side of the box we've got some blue smoke spilling over the edge from the front cover and a satin toys logo. I do like that the planet of Saturn is made up of S's, very clever Saturn toys. On the back of the box, another Saturn toys logo. And we have the same image from the front cover, this time with a Gaussian blur over the top. So that, you know, you can read all the various warnings and legal info, all that fun stuff. Ooh, I like this slip cover. It is simple, quite clearly, blue with some dots on the surface. That is era specific. Back in the 60s and 70s, this pop art style, it was all the rage. And they use the dots for shading in comic books, so it works on another level as well. We've got Dynamic Duo in the center, which, might I add, is a very clever third party name. It works for Batman and Robin without seeing Batman and Robin, so for third party, it's pretty much perfect. More importantly, are the figures perfect? And we sure as shit will find out throughout the course of this video. First in hand impressions for Batman, may as well start off with Bruce. So far so good, the body looks nice and padded, he feels quite sturdy. At the same time, I am noticing a couple of things which will potentially need to be adjusted, we'll touch on that a little bit later. The boy Wanda however, he looks great, spindly, lanky, yes. That's how he should be, he also feels quite sturdy. What we are going to do now though is get all of their accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything they come with. Starting off with the display bases, for the sake of simplicity I have put all of Batman's accessories on the right side and all of Robin's accessories on the left side. Not that it really matters, this is a two pack so if you wanted to accessory share give Robin some of Batman's accessories you can, and vice versa. Now the display bases, they are exactly the same between one another. One is blue for Batsy, and for Robin, it's green. Up top, a dynamic duo, and around the front, no nameplate. They kept it simple, and I can't fault them for that. Can you imagine if they had printed something stupid like Caped Dude or some third party name? Keeping it blank is always the preferred option rather than going down that route. Up top, for both stands, just a crotch grabber. We will focus in on these mouth plates when we actually put them on Batman later on. For now, just know that so far, I'm impressed with all three of these mouth plates. This is a classic. I'm sure you've all seen the gifs and the memes at this point, Batman running around with the bomb above his head. This is that bomb. In 1 6 scale, it's pretty basic, I'm not gonna lie, I would have liked a wick up top with a little flame effect piece. Can't complain, it gets the job done. And he comes with some hands specifically molded to hold the bomb above his head. It's not too heavy, at the same time, it is flat on the bottom and weighted. So if you want to have this on his display base, it is stable enough not to roll around and be all kinds of annoying. You do get two of the bat radios, bat walkie talkies, bat communicators, whatever the hell you want to call them, you get two of them. One for Robin and one for Batman. The handles are made of metal, real metal, cold to the touch and adjustable backwards and forwards. And I think that's supposed to be a bat, there's the ears, there's the wings, there's the little feet. I think I can see it, you let me know if I'm going mad in the comments down below. The speakers painted in gold, same thing with the antennas. 
they do feel a little bit fragile and they're made of plastic. When you are wedging these in the Cape Crusader's hands, just be careful, the last thing you'd want to do is break the antennas on the walkie talkies. These can easily be given to Robin, they don't just have to be used with Batman. If Robin's making an arrest, well, give him the bat handcuffs. They do have some little teeth on the opening section, so when you push them in, they do lock in position. And the chain is real metal. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was the same episode that we got the bomb and also the shark repellent. That must have been one hell of an episode, I need to go back and watch the show. Then again, like I said, I could be wrong. The canister is painted in metallic blue, it says shark repellent on the surface. And you can remove the cap, that's a little light nozzle. So if you want to use the hand specifically designed to go with the shark repellent, it's this one. You can wedge this in there. First you want to take off the cap, Justin, come on. Then wedge it in his hand, and now it looks like Batman is about to repel some sharks with his canister of shark repellent. Dude. These batarangs, they're so cool. We've got the little tails for the bats, and I love how the wings are rounded. It makes it look more natural, like a bat, and on the underside, they're curved inwards. Got the little ears up top as well. We do get two different sizes. The smaller one I like to give to Robin, and the bigger one to Batman. You can flip that if you want, no problem. There is a hole on the wings for both sides. This hole is larger for some reason. And on the underside of the clam tray, you do get some string. If you wanted to thread it through these batarangs and have these guys suspended as though they're climbing, which they do in the show a lot, okay, use the string, get that done, my friend. And lastly, a massive array of hands for both Robin and Batman. We've got open palm hands, we've got closed fists, we've got shark repellent hands, we've got bomb holding hands. We've even got Batusi hands for both of the dynamic duo. Batman's hands have this metallic finish to the blue, they look satin like his cape should. And for Robin, there are watches in the crevices and there's some dry brushing on top, which does match his gauntlets. Anyway, you'll see that later. What we are going to do now, though, is get Batman and Robin themselves out here. Um, individually. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. This figure is really solid. He isn't perfect. I hate to burst your bubble for those thinking, oh no, the Hot Toys ones, they were perfect. Maybe you've got your rose-tinted glasses on. The Hot Toys ones, they were far from perfect. And now, seeing as they are so old, the joints are getting loose. The outfits are starting to fray. They're starting to pit. They're starting to snag. And they just don't look as good as they did originally. Paint application technology, proportions, body technology, it's all moved on. And... This guy is a product of that. I think he might even look a little bit better than the Hot Toys ones, especially when it comes to those proportions. He looks suitably realistic. He solves quite a few of the problems that I had with the Hot Toys figures, whilst also introducing a few of his own. While Robin does fare better than Batman, not saying that he's a better figure, not by any means, he just has less problems than Batman does. He's still not perfect. There are a couple of things that immediately I know you're going to pick up on, especially the exposed elbow joints, and we will get there, I promise. Still, the proportions look fantastic, and the material choices are on point. It's not like they can just go ahead and use the same material as Hot Toys used. It doesn't work like that. They had to go out and do their own research, find their own materials, find stuff that hugs the body correctly, lays right, especially when it comes to the cape. I think they've managed. They've delivered two figures that give me some serious nostalgia vibes. You might be thinking, Justin, you're not that old. Surely you weren't around in the 60s when this show was first airing. No, you're right, I wasn't. I just have some very fond memories of sitting down and watching this Batman show with my dad. This was his Batman. This was his era of the dynamic duo. And he introduced me to all things superheroes. So I have to say a massive thank you to him for that. This show, it's stuck with me. Every now and then I still watch a couple of reruns or even the movie. It is full of cheese. That doesn't take away from the fact it's iconic. So too is this design for Robin. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Batman's head sculpt. Now I'm 99% sure that this is just the Hot Toys head sculpt. Satin Toys, they did a little bit of recasting action. You're either really going to hate that, or you're just not going to care. It's down to personal preference. Don't forget, recasting, yes, it's a shortcut, no question. You don't have to sculpt all the plastic pieces yourself. You can copy someone else. 
but you still have to paint the bits and pieces, so there is some level of artistry involved from satin toys. You have the eyebrows up top, some blue shading on the nose to add some depth. I like the way the ears flare out, there's wrinkling and line work on the mask itself. And for the face plates, we do have multiple options, we'll switch them out. They have gone a lot lighter with the skin tone, which I do prefer over the Hot Toys figures. For some reason, back in the day, Hot Toys, they were going very, very tan for head sculpts, hands, bodies, you name it. Satin Toys, they've fixed that, they've lightened it up, and they've added more detail. There's more skin texture, there's some 5 o'clock shadow, and the eyes poking through the cowl, they look real. This one I like, with the mouth slightly open, teeth are well painted, still all of that great detail with the skin texture. I love these mouth plates. This one, it can work in multiple poses, either for the Batusi, he's doing a little jig, or he's saying, Joker, you sneaky devil, stop whatever you're doing. Like I said, it works for multiple different poses. Now, to switch out the mouth plates, it's really easy. You just wedge your thumb underneath the mouth plate, and it's held in with a magnet. To install the new one, you do have to wedge it underneath the shelf where his nose sits, but it's not super challenging. This one looks pretty neat, too. The teeth, they're not super white and stark and fake looking. They do have a little bit of yellow to them. They look natural. Now, the nose does tend to get caught on the cowl's nose, and the cape sometimes gets stuck in the crevice when you're wedging the mouth plate in. Just be careful of those two pinch points. Other than that, you should be perfectly fine. The only other thing that I would have liked to have seen, seeing as though they're recasting all these pieces, you may as well add things. I would have loved to have had moving eyes here. That would have added a completely new dimension to what Hot Toys gave us originally, which was already fantastic. The other thing I do want to mention is this clasp, it's just too big. This is like a one-to-one -one scale clasp, and it's bright silver. This should have been black or blue and shrunk down to one six scale. I'm not quite sure why they decided to use a clasp as prominent as this one is. This cape is straight up gorgeous. It's two pieces of fabric laminated to one another. You've got the scallops down below. It's made of this satin material, not Saturn, satin, nice and shiny and metallic. The way it bounces back the light is just beautiful. Now you do have to be careful, I've got multiple points where it has started to snag on my fingers and I'm pretty careful about maintaining my hands so I don't destroy figures like this. Just be cautious when you're handling this figure, there are certain things which might potentially snag. It's also press studded in at his shoulders and around the back. They've done that, so this cape is supposed to be a little bit easier to manage. It's still quite stiff and starchy out of the box, so when you get this guy, just sit down, futz with the cape, and you should be able to get it to do what you want it to. His suit is full fabric, it's nice and stretchy and spandex, which is a good thing for those who don't like the position of the logo. Because this is a one-piece bodysuit, you'll have to take off the belt, take off the gauntlets, remove this piece, then just pull the spandex up, and that should pull the logo up as well. Out of the box, my logo was sitting even lower than this, but I did what I just said. I pulled up the fabric, and now the logo's sitting exactly where I want it to be. If you want it to be higher, just pull it up a touch more. The fabric also feels a lot sturdier than the Hot Toys figure. That one, it was a snag magnet. Seriously, I only ever held my Hot Toys figure like this. I never reviewed it, I never posed it, I grabbed it like this by the belt, popped it on the stand, and put it in the display. I was so careful. And still there's snags all over the suit. I have no idea how that happened. The weave is going up and down the correct way as it should be, and the body is padded. You can make out the pecs, the torso, the biceps, the body underneath the suit. It looks bang on to Adam West. Another complaint people have is that his underoos, his undies, his trunks, they are a touch big. And yes, out of the box, mine were too big, and they looked kind of silly. So what I did was I took them off and I flipped them round. It turns out that I guess they were reversed because now they sit so much nicer. They're not skin tight like this, maybe like some people would like. I don't care about that. These underoos, they weren't super, super tight in the show. There was a little bagginess to them. So having some wrinkles there, I just think it looks even more accurate to the show use suit. The belt has a metal belt buckle. You can see it's getting a little bit fingerprinty. I have to wipe that down after the video. And the pouches, they're just glossy yellow plastic. Once again, that looks spot on. His legs are padded, you can make out his kneecaps and some thigh detail as well. 
then down here for his boots, fully sculpted, not a split cut boot design. There are wrinkles on the surface, line work around the front and the pointed tops. Then on the underside, completely smooth for the soles. I would have liked split cut boot designs, it doesn't ruin this figure for me, as it didn't with the original Hot Toys version. If you're wondering, hang on Justin, why didn't you compare that Batman to the Hot Toys Batman? I will. Comparisons, I love doing them. And don't worry, it is going to happen. If you're wondering, ooh, do I pop these ones or the Hot Toys figures in my Batmobile? Do I have these in the display or the Hot Toys ones? Well, we'll answer that question, fingers crossed, later on. As for Robin's head sculpt, just like Batman's faceplates, the paint applications, it's really, really good. There's skin texture, you've got the speckling, the lips look great. I don't think I've ever said that before. Now, some people have said that he looks a little bit young. In the recasting process, maybe they lost a little bit of the detail. Don't forget, Burt Ward, when he played Robin in the 66 show, he was only 19. He was young. He wouldn't have wrinkles and frown lines and freckles and moles and skin tags and whatever the heck else people have as they develop in age. He would be very smooth skinned. As he is here, I have no complaints with the head sculpt. I also really like the hair. There's a lot of detail sculpted in. But once again, that goes to Hot Toys because this head sculpt is a recast of the Hot Toys one. I love this cape fabric. Being as shiny and metallic as it is, as saturated as it is, how it reflects the light, I can't get enough of it. It's also folded back on itself so it flares out around the front. He's got the collar up top, which is part of the cape. It's stitched in position. And it's press studded up the top of the shoulders but not around the back. It's, unlike Batman, just floating there. You do have a zipper on the tunic, though, if you want to remove the tunic and switch the body for one particular reason. Doable. Unzip this, take the various bits and pieces off, and switch the body out. I'm not sure which body to use for a 19-year-old Robin. If you know, just weigh in in the comments down below, because I really would like to do away with the exposed elbow joints. For the Hot Toys one back in the day, okay, I could get around it. But satin toys, you're recasting all of this stuff, head sculpts, accessories. You could have done better with the body. You could have given us seamless arms. It's fine. If you have the arms bent and from front on, you're never really going to notice those seams. When they're straight up and down, oh, they are noticeable. And they're really ugly. There's not even a ton of detail on the joints. If they'd printed the same skin texture on the joint and matched the color of the plastic, the lighter tone of the arms... Maybe it would have blended in a little bit better, or maybe I'm just dreaming, I don't know. The skin texture on the actual painted pieces, I have no problem with. The green shirt underneath the red tunic, rich, deep and saturated, and it matches the colour of the gauntlets. There's some dry brushing over the top of them with washers in the crevices. Then for the tunic itself, very vibrant. And these yellow strings, they definitely pop against the tunic. This R is screen printed on this black circle, then adhered to the red tunic. There is some texture and detail on it. And for the belt, it's a separate floating piece, so you can adjust it up and down if you so choose. These gold canisters, the goldish yellow for the cape, the bright yellow for the strings, the gold for the hardware around them, it all just comes together. It's a very striking yet also simple Robin costume. Coming down to the legs, he's got some green undies on. And is this a unitard? Let me know if you know down in the comments below. It might be harkening back to his days as a circus performer as part of the Flying Graysons. He's got some stockings on. And satin toys, they've gone for a little bit more of a saturated pinky tone. Versus hot toys, they went for more of a beige or neutral tone. I don't mind the colour, I like having a touch more saturation. What I do mind is because the stockings are super thin... You can see the body underneath, you can see the double bend for the knees, and you can see the connection point between the little ankle ball joint and the shins. Not a deal breaker, just something to be aware of. The stitching is very clean, and so far, I've been handling this guy and no snags. I was worried about this point right here, but I think that's just a little piece of plastic sticking out from the body underneath. No snags, hopefully it stays that way. For the boots... Pixie style, classic Robin. They flare out over the top. These are rubbery pieces of plastic, so they shouldn't break off. You've got some washers in the crevices, some wrinkling, so they look like proper fabric boots. And on the underside, just like Batman, 
no sculpted tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, we had to start here. This is a two-pack after all. Saturn Toys Batman, Saturn Toys Robin. They were quite literally designed to go together, and they do. They mesh very, very nicely. Batman, a full-grown adult Adam West versus a 19-year-old Burt Ward, he is taller than him, as you'd expect. The colours play off each other very nicely. The brighter, more vibrant colours of Robin, the darker, rich, saturated blue of Batman. I don't really have any complaints with how these two look standing together. Nor do I with Mars Toy's Joker thrown in the mix. He is taller than the dynamic duo, and that works for me. I don't mind Cesar Romero's Joker being a little bit taller. By the way, if you haven't already, go and check out the review for Joker. He is as close to a perfect 1-6 scale figure as I've ever seen. The amount of accessories, the head sculpts, yes, multiple, the proportions, the outfit, it's all ace. And he complements these two, the Caped Crusaders, so very well. Having such a vibrant display, no question. It's going to pop in your collection room. Next up, Hot Toys Batman on the right and Satin Toys Batman on the left. For some reason, the Hot Toys one is ever so slightly taller. Not enough to make a huge difference, I think, in the display. Still, if you want Batman to be as tall as possible, that is something to be aware of. The symbol is higher, the suit is a different colour, and the skin tone on the mouth plate, like we've already discussed, is darker on Hot Toys. For a super zoomed in comparison, Saturn Toys is still on the left and Hot Toys is still on the right. There are more differences than I first thought. The colours, they're completely different. The yellows are more vibrant for Hot Toys, the suit is just blue versus the grey for Saturn Toys. The cape is more saturated and metallic on Hot Toys and the same thing for the gloves, the boots and the cowl. Everything is just dialed up for the saturation with Hot Toys. I like the more muted tones with satin toys, and the skin tone on the faceplate being less tan. I reckon that's closer to Adam West's actual skin tone. There is still a little bit more detail on the Hot Toys mouth plates though. Look, it's much of a muchness, it just comes down to personal preference. Which coloured suit do you prefer, which style of skin tone do you prefer, then make your choice. Ooh, Satin Toys Robin, he also runs smaller than the Hot Toys one. I didn't think that was going to be a thing. I thought, if anything, the new ones would be taller, but nope, Hot Toys is ever so slightly bigger. The proportions on Hot Toys Robin, for some reason, they just look weird. His neck is not quite right, his shoulders are too high, something is not working for me. Versus Saturn Toys, on the left, it looks more natural and more realistic, which might just give him the edge over the Hot Toys one. Time for Robin's close up comparison with Batman. This was really tricky, I didn't know which one I preferred. With Robin, I do. I prefer the Satin Toys one. Everything about it, I think they've just improved on. The head sculpt is just as good as the Hot Toys one, but lighter in skin tone. The same thing for the body, you can see how dark Hot Toys went with the body, I'm not sure why they went as tan as they did. Then the red is more of a rich red versus an orangey red with Hot Toys. The belt, the gold is more vibrant. The cape is a little bit less yellow, more gold, which I like. And the stockings, I didn't realise the Hot Toys ones had the kneecaps poking through. So I can't even say that Hot Toys killed it with the stockings versus satin toys there, much of a muchness really. It's just down to the colour, and satin toys being more saturated, it looks less like skin tone and more of a purposeful choice for the costume. Going over Batman's articulation, starting off with his head sculpt. It looks like it would be pretty limited, right? You've got the collar piece, it's part of the cowl. No, it's actually a split cut design. The head sculpt, it articulates independently of the collar. It's on a double ball peg, looking forward to there, looking back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there at the shoulders, they will go forward and back on soft ratchets. There's also a butterfly joint that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going the full way, and a hinge and swivel for the wrist peg, which unfortunately isn't blue to match the glove and the gauntlet. The torso is padded, so it's limited going forward and back. It still moves though. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there. They will go out to there. Swivel at the upper thigh. Double bend at the knee on ratchets going past 90. Then the boots, like we discussed earlier, they're not a split cut boot design. This is all one solid sculpted piece of plastic, which means no forward and back and no ankle tilt. 
you're really only gonna get swivel. How about the boy Wanda? Starting off with his head sculpt, it's also on a double ball peg. Looking forward to there, going back to there, the neck is articulated at the bottom on a ball joint. Swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, the shoulder does catch on the upper torso, so just tuck it under to maximise your range of motion. It will go forward and back, not on ratchets as far as I can tell. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that gets a ton of range going forward and it hinges up and down. There isn't a swivel at the bicep, there is a swivel at the elbow. It's also a single bend. Then for the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. This time, it's colour matched to the gauntlet and the glove, unlike Batman. I don't think there's any padding for the torso. Crunching forward and back seems unhindered, swiveling and pivoting side to side. The legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh. I mean, you can see it, there's a double bend at the knee. Not on ratchets, going past 90. Because Robin's pixie boots are so low cut, they get out of your way for range of motion. Going forward and back, swivel and also some ankle tilt. It is slightly restricted thanks to these swooshy sticky outy pieces up top. Wrapping up on Saturn Toys, the dynamic duo. This two pack, this is always how these two should be packaged. If you're doing Batman and Robin, it should be a two pack, right? No question. Hot Toys back in the day, they didn't do that. They went the individual route and these figures, they sat around for a while, like a really long time. And eventually they sold out, now they're expensive, enter Saturn Toys, making these designs for these classic characters available again. If you have the Jazz Inc. 1966 Batmobile, and you don't have the Hot Toys figures, chances are you want to put someone in the Batmobile, this two-pack, this is it for you. If you really want to hunt down the Hot Toys ones just for the sake of having all original licensed stuff, that would be the only reason why I'd recommend the Hot Toys figures. These are just as good. They're still not perfect, they have issues, like the visible anatomy through Robin's legs, the body underneath poking through the tights, and the exposed elbow joints. Then for Batman, the baggy underoos and the low symbol, which can be adjusted, so not a huge deal. Plus the fact that they recast a lot of stuff, which is going to rob people the wrong way. If you don't care about any of that, and you're sitting here thinking, bloody hell, these guys look fantastic, get them. It's as simple as that. The bodies are super sturdy compared to my Hot Toys ones because they're super old now. The ankle joints on Robin, oh, they're not great. He falls over constantly. In my display, I'm actually replacing the Hot Toys Robin with this one. I've said it multiple times in this video, the lighter skin tone for both Batman and Robin, it just looks better to me and closer to Adam West and Burt Ward. So at the end of this, can I recommend them? Shit, yeah, I can. Don't forget, though, seems weird, whenever we get to this point, I have to say it. This is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure 2 pack that I'm putting in my collection after this video is done. It was a review sample provided by Satin Toys, all opinions are my own. You can see the figures, it's not like I can lie to you if you don't like something that you've seen on camera but I do. Who cares, make up your own opinion. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe, we'll catch you in the next video.